Hey y'all, TSF here. Uh, I want to talk about some stuff. Uh, so, a lot of the reaction to my 308 series of videos revolved around uh, the perception that what was what you guys were seeing was due to operator error. And uh, that there was no way that the round around dispersion. Hold on. That there was no way that the round around dispersion was due to mechanical error. And even though we had definite results, visible results of changing the magazine changing the ammo to the proper ammo that the system liked uh, but also free floating the barrel so basically all just asserted that I couldn't shoot that my steady position was all wrong that I needed to get lower to the ground uh, that my firing arm position was wrong it just went on and on by all the armchair critics with no marksmanship videos on their channels. Some people said that I wasn't even a combat veteran or that I'd even been in the military and that my experience comes from nothing. I see these YouTubers who like address the naysayers and here I am, you know, so uh, this is definitely in response to, to those naysayers. Um, but I promise you this TSF fans, this is going to be the one and only video where I go over my specific techniques uh with the fundamentals of firing how i analyze terrain and establish my firing positions um all other naysayers they're simply just going to get a link to this video because I'm, I'm tired of writing i mean i write it all through there everything's on you know the youtube channel my army experience is on the youtube channel where you know where my uh opinion comes from where my techniques come from it's all it's all on there so uh this is this is it. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna uh, gripe anymore. I'm just gonna post a link to this. Okay. So we're at a we're at my zero spot, and uh, you know when I do five five six a zero five five six out here. That's easy though. I only need uh, fifty yards, fifty meters. All right. But for 308, for 308, uh, I need 100, 100, 100 yards. So good luck trying to find a clear area, uh, relatively flat, but clear with these bushes, right? These bushes here are taller than me, right? So good luck trying to find visibility out here what you can't tell in the uh, in the 308 videos is that the target is of a higher elevation at the uh, firing point all right all right and I know what you're gonna say oh it's different at the muzzle okay so here at the muzzle all right you see what we got all right 2404 2403 2402 Okay, so let's go. Uh, let's go out to the firing point. Let's go out to the firing point and see what the elevation is out there. You would think this would be a great time to check your pace count, but you'll see here uh, if you go back to my uh, 
know your pace count video you'll see that uh, the elevation gain is pretty substantial so maybe not be the best spot because your paces will be shorter than normal Okay, and I know what you're gonna say. Oh, but that's not the that's not the target. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So well, let's come down here and let's check it at the target. Twenty four eleven, twenty four ten. All right, and that's feet. All right. If you can see the, uh, you can see the units there. All right. So three minus ten is seven feet. That's a seven foot difference in elevation from the firing point out to the target point. Okay. Firing point. Hundred yards. Target point. This is seven feet. <laughs> to center mass of that target. Point is, is that I am not, you know, shooting straight. I've got to elevate, right? Which is gonna affect how far back my uh, buttstock can drop, right? With my arm, so it's gonna affect steady position. It's gonna be, it's gonna affect how uh, I acquire targets and how. I can achieve center mass aim on that target, right? Because of the elevation. Total exaggeration, of course, you know, not to scale, but this is what I'm talking about, right? When it comes to what you can't appreciate by watching the video uh, on YouTube because you're not here on the terrain with me. Okay, so one of the chief complaints uh, on my 308 videos was my steady position. I'm not sure, you know, my my elbow was going off, you know, but you all said that I, oh, my, my prone was too high and uh, just a whole bunch of stuff. Um, so here I am in the, in the prone, all right? Weapon is in the pocket of my shoulder, okay? Weapons in the pocket of my shoulder. My firing arm is beneath beneath the weapon, all right? My wrist in a neutral position, okay? So, uh, you know, you guys wanted me to get low and all this kind of stuff, which would require the elbows to splay out. So if you're, if you're fighting, you know, you're going to be behind cover, right? And so one of the, one of the key things, I mean, yes, you, you have to be in a position to absorb recoil and be able to get right back on the target, right? But you're not going to be in an L, right? So that you're completely exposed back here, you know, to enemy fire or potentially out from under cover, right? So your weapon and your body are not perpendicular to each other. They should be generally in a line from the practicality of fighting, right? That's what I'm training for. That's what this is for fighting and or hunting. All right. So, uh, you know, a lot of what you guys said was, Oh, you got to get low, get low. Okay. If I get low, look at what's happening to my firing arm, All right? I'm getting this chicken wing effect here right? We don't fire pistols like this, all right? We fire them like this, all right? Neutral p position of your wrist, all right? This is what causes trigger problems right here, all right? Because you can't, this kind of minimizes trigger problems. See what I'm saying? So firing arm underneath the platform, all right? As much as can be, as long as, you know, you're in the pocket, all right, neutral position, non-firing arm, all right, supporting, okay. You, 
a lot of your complaints about you got to get low, 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 you know, to get a, you know, this is not, I mean, I'm like, you know, completely trying not to, I'm at a point now where it's like, I don't want to like go all the way to, you know, I can't, I don't want to slip now. So now I'm kind of like clenching my elbows in, you know, flexing the pecs to kind of squeeze the ground, you know what I'm saying? In order to maintain this one particular position, right? When privates first come in the army, right, they do push-ups. So we're doing push-ups and our arms are perpendicular, right? But what happens is, right, when they do them out like this is the shoulder blades meet in the middle. So that's kind of like what happens uh, when you lower yourself in the firing position. Your shoulder blades meet in the middle, make stopping you from going, you know, all the way down. And then you have to extend your neck you know, to make up the make up the difference. You could see it in my uh, 5560 video, it was crazy. I was all the way down on a little uh, platform thing and I noticed that as I was like completely splayed out and I was trying to, uh, my neck was extended, my head was tilted and it was just ugly. I was like, wait, why don't I just bring up the barrel, right? So that's, that's the solution is bring the system up to you, right? Instead of going through all this body mechanics madness, um, just bring the system up to you. So for me, this does not work. Spreading out with the chicken wing action, right? This does not help me to get low, right? If I'm sideways, you know, to maintain my neutrality here, now I'm out to, you know, I'm forming an L basically, you know what I'm saying? And that's, that's not cool, All right? That's not how it should be done. All right. You got to be behind to absorb the recoil. Okay. Moving on. When y'all saw the precise round around dispersion in my 308 videos left right left right left right y'all some of you guys could not see that as mechanical error it absolutely had to be operator error which i mean it's like left i mean same interval right it had to be operator error okay mistake right and this is this is what you're not seeing when the camera's over there okay little stubbies right when i uh my firing grip i call it kind of and i explained this in my last video um in uh, 308 solutions part three was that uh our mp10 solutions part three i'll leave a link but there's a you know uh when you're holding a katana, right, and when you're doing uh, Aikido, which is um, a form derived from um, uh, I'm having a TBI moment right now, um, from kendo, all right, from Japanese uh, fencing, all right, they grip. All right, whenever you grip in a uh, uke's wrist or whatever, you know, it's always with the last two or three fingers, right? And the same thing with the katana, it's it's gripped with the bottom two or three fingers and guided with the rest. I do that with my pistol grips. Okay. So notice I'm already I'm already stretching. So I do my gripping with the bottom three fingers, then I apply a torque, a torque, and then the pull back, right? And again, I don't, I don't want to splay my shoulders out and cause this chicken wing effect, right? So neutral, neutral wrist, right? As much as possible. And then, um, what I do is downward torque, right? This puts, this puts the, the pad of my finger, right, on the trigger. 
that's it. There's no, there's no chance for it to, right? If I'm out here like this, now there's a chance as I'm, you know, as I squeeze that now I'm squeezing not in line with the platform, right? I want to squeeze in line with the platform. So neutral wrist, downward torque, back into the shoulder stock. And when I squeeze, right, it doesn't move. All right, it doesn't move. Try that again. All right, downward, pull back, squeeze. It doesn't move. Again, what you're seeing, all right, and my expression, I, I expressed it in the in the other videos. I was dealing with the with the squeeze bag, right? That was in order for it to be accurately under here, right? It had to move my arm out, <laughs> you know, so now I'm getting a chicken wing effect. And so this whole dynamic, the position of my wrist is different, you know, compared to what I'm used to, right? That's what I was saying. Okay. So, uh, there you have it. Once again, all right. Motionless. Okay. Um, So we've talked about uh, steady position, how that affects aim, right? And the terrain that I'm dealing with, the body mechanics of how all that, you know, steady position affects the ability to achieve aim. Uh, we talked about trigger squeeze. And now... Here's the photo right out of the book. The thing is, I do exactly as this pick details. We were taught you could hold your breath anywhere during your breathing cycle as long as you do it exactly the same way every time. I tend to do it at the bottom of my exhale, just like in the pick. There's always a little left, which is why you heard an audible exhale after each round was fired. center. That was a flyer, but I'm at least, what I'm seeing is that I'm at least two MOA low. Oh, this heat shimmy. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it up. It's a quarter inch at uh, at 100 yards, one quarter MOA per click on the site. So two MOA should be eight clicks up. So eight. Okay. Now let's try it.
right. That's where I was trying to get it. <clears throat> and my trigger's sticking. I need to ditch these gloves. I hate not having the tactile sense of the trigger, man. All right. So that was three. I had the two high. And then one right on the outside of bullseye. So I'm going to keep what I got here. See if I could just get over myself. <sighs> it's really shimmery downrange right now. Hard to focus. The target's got all the heat waves on it. So where is center? You know what I mean? Right there. Yeah, this is a tough shoot. <sighs> so yeah. So this is the first time I've shot this 308 in uh, the spring and now it's uh it's late October and uh, or mid October I should say uh, and I haven't shot since uh, honestly I can't remember I've been focusing on pistol because since it's such a short range, I don't have to deal with wind. You know, I just got to put targets up, anchor them down. So I have not been going long distance. So this is, uh, I mean, I, I adjusted it, ate him away. And then, you know, so the fundamentals that you guys are bitching about, I'm doing it. I mean, I did. I went and added on the sandbags. Some of you guys suggested, get off that bipod, get on sandbags. Okay. Uh but this is not this is not combat conditions in my opinion. So uh this is this is uh this is schoolhouse, schoolyard, you know, I guess. But if you're out in the field, um it's not it's it's not gonna be this this uh, easy. Two shepherds poles, right? And that hilltop, the brown hilltop in the middle, which is the right of the two brown hilltops, that one on the left is actually a couple kilometers away. But this near one, that's where I'm shooting from. It's a between four and five hundred yards away. All right, for scale, one can of spray paint. All right, it's twelve inches. Twelve inch plate. Let's see if we can see it. 
from the perch. Hopefully, you'll see the setup because I'm all by myself here. There's your primary camera and then the secondary target cam in the back. Okay, for all those naysayers who don't even believe in the work. So, you saw the, uh, right. you saw the, uh, target being set up. You got the target cam rolling over my shoulder there. And I forgot my earplugs. Cut it. Camera one, mark. Camera two, mark. We got our Straylock app on here. 30 clicks up, all right, nothing in windage. It's got the range in there for about 430 yards and uh, that should be about right. So let us see what is up with that. Okay. No elbow support, of course. Ugh, hate it. Zoom out. There it is, zoom in. 20 power. Real challenging with no elbow rest. Okay. Here we go. Target. Wait for this thing to settle back down, huh? Oh, doubtful. Target. So look, the zero is good. All right. I I I know it might not satisfy y'all that I don't have my group like in the right where the MOA lines cross, but I'm a quarter inch. Go back to the target, and I'm a quarter inch, a quarter MOA from center. My skills will not let me adjust by one click. At, at 100 yards, one click is not gonna matter. Two clicks, yes, but two clicks left would have put me on the other side. So, you know, I'm glad y'all have better skills than I do, you know what I'm saying? But it's completely different from how this thing was shooting straight out of the box. It's completely different. The rounds are not going on both sides of the target. Right. I mean, look at the, go back to the target. All my rounds are on the right side. You know, we had a consistent up down as my flyers were going as I was warming up, but then, you know, I made a couple, a, a couple quick adjustments from how it was zeroed six, eight months ago, whenever I shot last. And then it stayed in the center. Right. And then the rounds started touching right there on the on the bullseye zero. There are four impacts touching. All right, so uh, people doubt that how can you get a shitty zero and then come out here and like hit steel at, at 400 yards? I just showed you. 
that I just did it, right? Bottom line is I had problems with this M&P 10 out of the box. I addressed those problems even based off of uh, viewer comments and uh, made those adjustments and this thing rocks. This thing rocks. I think a lot of people, they're looking at YouTube videos for, for one of two things, right? And a lot of it, I think, has to do with validating their own choices about their own purchases, right? Why are you bagging on the M&P 10? It's a great, right? Okay, you own it. That's cool. I'm glad your experience was great for you, but it wasn't for me. I had to learn that the 128 green rounds sucked. I had to learn that the 165 was okay, but that the 175, the uh, the Federal GM 302, what is it? GM 308 M2, those rounds are boss. Those are the rounds. And I can make those rounds do whatever. So, uh, so I've learned a lot, I've developed this a lot, and it works fantastic, it's a great rifle. I'm not, I was not saying it's a crappy rifle. You just saw me do this. So, and you saw it from the gun cam, or the target cam, to the gun cam, you know what I'm saying? I can't, you saw it on the paper down there. I was zeroing right down there, 100 yards out. Put the target at 430 yards, and there you have it. So, I don't know what else to say. But some of your suggestions on firing position and stuff like that, just they're not, uh, it, they don't work for me. This, you know, what I've done works for me and I, it is working for me. And I had to figure out how to make it work for me. You know, I'm glad your experience right out of the, the box with it was fantastic. I mean, that's cool on you. I mean, that's great. It wasn't the same for me. And it isn't the same for a lot of people if you read the comments below the video. Um, I welcome comments. A lot of the suggestions that I put into place here were off of y'all comments. So keep commenting. Let me know what you think. But don't tell me that I don't know how to shoot or that I don't know what I'm doing or that I've never been in combat. Go to my YouTube channel and look through the body of work. There's combat footage that I shot in combat, in country. It just blows my mind that people would say that without figuring out, you know, researching who you're dealing with first before you open your yaps. Anyway, m and 10, great rifle, loopholed, 6.5 by 20, great scope, federal gold medal Sierra Match King, 175 grain, Great rounds, all right? It's great. Don't be butthurt if your experience is different. Your mileage may vary. I don't even know why I got to say that without people getting all pissy in their panties and shit. Anyways, I'm out, folks. Thanks for tuning in. If you dug it, let me know. You can follow me on Facebook, TSF Films, IG, TSF Films, it's on there. But please subscribe to the TSF channel. Your subscriptions and your comments and your likes keep me going because I'm not getting paid for this. I am just, I make, an, I, I trickle enough kickbacks from the ads to keep me just under, I don't even have to pay taxes yet on this. I pay so little or I earn so little off of YouTube. So, and because it's a firearm video, chances are it's going to get flagged and it won't get monetized anyway. So there you have it. Thanks, folks. I'm out.